Yo, what's up, guys? Trader X coming to you from Soweto one more time. All right, so I'm back at it again with a supply and demand um, tutorial, really. It's not really a tutorial. Um, I'm just going to be giving you a couple of things um, for you to enhance kind of your, your you know, your, your knowledge of um, the supply and demand zones. Um, so today we are going to be talking about finding high probability zones, right? Um, the reason the reason I'm doing this is because I had quite a lot of people message me and tell me that you know I'm I'm having a bit of a problem with finding these particular zones. So is there some sort of you know way for me to actually do them or to to draw them or to identify them? Is there some sort of a checklist? Well, the answer is yes. There is a checklist. And that's what I'm going to be sharing with you guys. So welcome to it. This is supply and demand finding high probability zones, right? So if this is your first time joining us, please remember to subscribe and hit that notifications button. And yeah, so that you can be notified whenever I upload a video. And thank you to each and every one of you who've subscribed to my channel. I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, you know, I'm just sharing my knowledge with you guys, right? <laughs> so let's jump into it, guys, without further ado. Right, so here's what I did. I took a screenshot of, what was it? Was it Eurosus Funk? I'm not too sure what it is, but let me just take a look. The, the reason, it's actually Eurosus Funk Japan. Yeah. The reason I actually did this is because I, I found a very, very nice um, example of what it is that I'm going to be discussing with you guys or the, the checklist that I'm going to be giving to you guys so that you can follow and you can you know be able to easily identify those um, high probability zones, right? All right, so let's jump into it. Let's jump into it. Swiss Frank Japan, yeah, this is the daily chart, right? It's This happened in 2017, right? Yeah, 2017. Um, but don't worry about the time frame. Um, the reason I'm saying that is because supply and demand works on any time frame. You could be trading the five-minute chart. I've never tried the five-minute chart or the one-minute chart, but I day trade the 15-minute uh, chart, right, on all the majors. Yeah, on all the majors, and, and, and as well as uh, gold. Uh, I love gold, by the way, but a, as well as gold. And um, yeah, I follow the same principles, essentially. Nothing changes. That's all you literally have to do. What I'm going to give you now is going to just push you further into, you know, being a consistent um, supply and demand trader, if you understand what I'm trying to say. But yeah, that's essentially what I'm going to be doing. Um, so before we go ahead, guys, I need you to get a pen and a paper because you're going to have to write this down, right? I'm, you know me, my videos are all organic. I don't put anything down, I don't write nothing, I don't make notes whatsoever. So I'm not gonna be writing anything on the screen for you guys, so I, I, at least now you, well, rewind the video and take down notes, right? And I, I just don't wanna drag this one here, this tutorial here, and I'm, I'm blabbing. Anyway, let's, let's go ahead. So today is the 7th September 2019, and it's four minutes past one um, South African time, that is. The markets closed, I think, about two hours ago. And yeah, it was a profitable day today. Got away with two trades on the Euro USD, which I liked. And yeah, quick cash injection. But anyway, that's besides the point. So let's jump in, guys. So... Looking at this, the screenshot that I took here, yeah. my pen just fell. Sorry about that, guys. So looking at uh, this chart here. So what we can see, so suppose, guys, before we do, actually, 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 side note, before I go into that, guys. Now, I, I want to make something clear to, to say the people that, well, not really the people that don't know anything about this, but to everyone, right? Supply, this is how supply and demand works. If you don't know what we're talking about, or if this is all gibberish that, that I'm speaking, right, and you're new to our, to this channel, uh, th there's two more videos, tutorials that I did on supply and demand. So I suggest you go back and watch two of those, and then come back and watch this one, because it will further kind of enhance your understanding of supply and demand. But anyway, as I was saying, as I was saying, this is quite important, guys, with supply and demand. Remember what supply and demand we want to see price establish a zone first, right? We want to see price establish a zone first, and then we essentially wait for price to come back to that zone that it established. So in this case, because it's at the bottom, this is demand, right? So D, right? So we essentially hang around here. We want to see price 
return to this level here and then we can take our trades here remember this is important guys you need to understand the importance of this it's it's very very vital right that you wait to see what happens here here as well as here right so all of this essentially let me remove that too so all of this needs to happen first before we can go in when price comes back to that level right so today what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be giving you a checklist of how you can actually tell that this is going to be a high probability trade right it will give you the confidence to hang around here and go yeah this guy here checks out so i've got confidence to trade here and risk my money here right but remember this zone here or the first time the price establishes the zone has to comply with the rules that i'm going to give you if it doesn't don't trade it if you trade it you might lose money that will be your fault right we all know trading involves high risk right so if you're not going to be investing wisely you're going to lose your money so yeah essentially you know just follow the rules follow the rules i mean that's what trading is all about all you do is just follow the rules all right so let's jump into it so remember guys always remember that we want to see price do this we want to see price establish a zone and then once it's established that zone we want this zone here or what happens here to you know comply with our checklist you know, we want it to comply with our checklist in order for, for it to give us confidence to trade here when price returns to that level. Because now when it returns, you already know that we're heading up, right? Great, great. Now, let's go back to that screenshot. Okay, so suppose we are anywhere here. Doesn't matter, but anywhere here, right? We suppose we're looking at, oh, this is current price. We see nothing else. This is where we are. This little blue candle there that we can't see there. But suppose that's where we are. And you're looking at this chart. The first thing that jumps out to you and me is that we can see demand, strong demand here. Right? We can see strong demand there. But look what happens here. Demand slowly starts to kind of dwindle. And then finally, it peaks out. Right? When then it, after peaking out, We've got supply coming into the market. Always remember that, guys. The only thing that stops demand is supply. The only thing that stops supply is demand. And so it goes. That's all there is to it, right? Always, always, always remember that. Right, so demand going up. Demand dwindles, right? And then it finds or it tops out, essentially, right? And then we've got supply coming into the market heavy supply that's heavy supply right heavy demand we can see that all right so off the bat we can already see that price has reached or price reached an equilibrium supply and demand reached an equilibrium right and from that equilibrium supply came out after you know the demand right now remember the distal and your distal as well as your um, proximal line, right? Your distal line in the in the case of demand. Distal line goes at the top of the wicks, the highest point the wicks have reached, right? And then a proximal goes right at the bottom of those candles that go sideways. In this case, only these two go sideways. Sure, we can see that. Only those two go sideways, right? This one goes into the zone. And this one here gets out of the zone, this red one, right? But these two establish the zone. Sure, we can see that. Now, let me remove my ruler and let me clear my throat. <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. Great stuff. So we can already see that this is our zone, right? So this is where your pen and paper is going to come in handy, right? So here's what you need to establish once you see this, right? In order for you to be able to know if this zone here is going to be a good 
zone to trade in the future. You understand what I mean? So when price comes back from down here, from current price, comes back up to test this level, how are we going to have confidence that, you know, price is going to shoot all the way down? That is exactly what you actually going to be. This is what, you know, the, um, the uh, checklist is going to uh, provide you with. The checklist is just basically going to provide you with the confidence to trade when price returns to that level. What the hell? Anyway, let's remove that. Get offline. Um, sorry about... the hell what's going on with me okay so distal line proximal line right so how do we know that this level is going to be a strong level now this is supply right that's a supply zone how, why is it a supply zone because supply came out of it <laughs> there we go that's supply supply came out of it supply came out of it right demand went into it Supply came out of it. So that's a supply zone. This is an imbalance of supply and demand. The level itself is an imbalance of supply and demand right there. Right? But ultimately, demand came out right? to those who just don't know. But anyway, let's move along. So how do we know that this is strong? How do we know, not really strong, but how do we know that this is a good level that we're going to be taking trades off of in the future? Great. So... The first thing that you want to establish first, right? Remember, we had current price. We, we don't know anything that's going to happen in the future. So the first thing that you want to establish is how did price leave that level? Very, very important, guys. You need to understand how did price leave the level. Write that down. That's your first step that you're going to identify. How did price leave the level, right? Now, when price leaves the level, say, for instance, we were... We don't see anything past this, right? Just, just say, for instance, this was our level, right? And we drew our distal here and we drew a proximal right there. When price leaves a zone in big candles like this, we want to see that. Checklist. Remember that, guys. There's only two things that we want to see. Only two things that we want to see. We want to see big candles coming out of that zone. It can be one very long and big candle or two very long and big candles or three very long and big candles or however many very long and big candles coming out of that zone. But they have to be big. They have to be huge. Understand that they have to be bigger. If you compare them to what happened to the left, right, they have to be bigger than what happened to the left for about 10, previous 10. You don't have to count, but previous 10, it has to be big. They have to be huge, right? Write that down. They have to be big, right? The second scenario that we want to see is we want to see a gap. So say, for instance, this candle here, this, green, this red candle here. Ah, can I get white? Can I? Nope. I bet I can get white here. Say, well, that doesn't work, but anyway. Say this, this um, candle here doesn't work, doesn't, um, let's just say this candle here didn't exist. What the hell am I doing? Oh, nice UI. This candle here, there you go, you white thing in the jig, you. So say this candle didn't exist right there. Actually, let me do this to just better illustrate it to you guys. Get every, all of these off. Let's get rid of this. Shut up. I hate pop-ups. Um, I'm, I'm not quite the artist, but yeah. Bear with me. So say that candle didn't exist whatsoever. Get away. That candle didn't exist. There's a distal and there's a proximal line. Right? We want to see this. We want to see that gap. That gap tells us, right? That the strong demand. When price gaps away from a zone, you know that that zone is a good zone that you can trade in the future should price come back to that. With no exception. Always understand that. So you want to see two things. One of, one of two things happen. 
we want to see a gap away from the zone or we want to see big candles moving away from the zone right and that way we'll be able to tell that that level is actually quite a good level right there's a lot of interest in that level now we all know that big candles mean a lot of activity and a lot of activity can only come from a certain few people and those will be the market makers right because no retail trader can move markets like that none no one can do that only market makers with big pockets can actually do that their orders far outweigh you know retail traders and that's how we lose money <laughs> but anyway so that's what we want to see right we don't want to see a gradual move out of the out of uh, the uh, the zone for instance um I, I don't have one here i don't have something oh here right at the edge here uh, let me remove everything here right at the edge right um, let's just suppose that this was a distal line and this was a proximal line right and let's just suppose at these blue line anyway what we don't want to see just because we don't really want to see it is we don't want to see a gradual move down right so we don't want to see Oh my goodness, I wish I took I took a, a screenshot of something that has a gradual move away from uh, a zone. But anyway, we don't want to see a type of scenario that looks like that. See how these candles look here? These candles here? We don't want to see a gradual move from a zone like that. If it moves gradually like that, then we know that that zone is not something that we want to risk our money on. That's not something that we can make a play on. Right? It has to be pronounced. That that move away from the zone has to be pronounced in order for us to be able to go, ooh, here we go. Now our one criteria has been filled, right? Or has been met. So I think I should write this down for everyone. Um, okay, record point. I don't know what's, what's going on there. So the first thing that we want to see is, like I said, how did price leave the area right so that's the first thing that we want to see how did price leave the area right secondly what we want to see is how much time was spent in the zone itself how much time was spent in the zone here this is where these are my rules guys you need to understand this these are my rules right the maximum that i would allow in a zone is actually four candles Right? So on the fifth candle, price has to leave that zone in order for me to be able to, or for, for me personally, for you know that zone to be a valid zone for me, right? Um, I, I just think five is quite a lot, right? And so much so that it makes the level not reliable anymore. So, but however, let's put our distal line and our proximal line back again. So here, if you bear in mind the fact that you know this is the candle that came out and this is the candle that went in to the zone itself how many days was price in the zone I was only in the two days or two sessions which is these two candles right up there before the exits that's check number two easy as that so the few the fewer the candles the better the signal Right? Or the better the zone, not the signal. <laughs> but the better the zone, right? So write that down as well. How much time was price at the zone? Right? How much time was price at the zone? And remember that guys, side note, remember the fewer the candles the better right the fewer the candles the better so that was the second one we go over to a third one so the third one is now this one is very very important very very important right this is the bee's knees this is what ultimately gives us the confidence to go ahead and trade this particular setup right now let me explain the third one is how far price 
went before returning to the zone. Let's write that down. You need to keep track of that, and I'll explain that. How far did price go before coming back to zone? Right. How far did price go? How far did price go before coming back to zone? Right? Or before coming back to the zone? Doesn't really matter. This is not an English class, by the way. But anyway, so how far did price travel? before it came back into the zone right and but how far what i actually mean is how far and how long essentially is you know what i would say not how how far and how long not how long how far how far did it actually go until it came back because some in some instances that i've actually noticed especially in forex is the longer price spends away from that zone, right? especially on the daily chart, the longest time, if it spends the longest, longest time away from that zone, when it comes back to that zone, chances are, you know, it's going to blow right past that zone. So you need to be careful with that. You need to be extra, extra careful, right? So I'm just going to keep it at it as it is. How far price went before it came back to the zone, right? So that is key, guys. That is... That is key. Now, let me just go back to the chart itself. I'll actually go back to the chart in a minute. So how far it actually came. Now, let me explain this real quick. So suppose this is, you know, where it bottoms out, right? Or where price bottoms out. And then it just gradually continues to go up and up and up until it gets to our zone and gives us the signal to sell, right? There's like this approximate line. And then gives us, not really gives us a signal, but we go ahead and institute our sell here, our sell sell limit right there right this here the distance the price traveled is actually going to be your profit margin understand that that is going to be your profit target right understand it it's going to be your profit target it doesn't matter how long price or actually how far price actually travels right just as long as it comes back and it has that positive reaction to the downside you best believe that your target is going to be up down there. Even if it's the daily chart and it spends, what, three, four months away from that zone, the time when it comes back to that zone and it spends, what, another four more months um, heading towards the zone there, that's how much you're going to take. All you have to do is just be patient until price comes back down here and you take your profit. Now, here's the thing, right, and you need to be careful with this as well. I would not recommend this, but you need to be careful with it. I would, I, I normally would tell people, well, will tell the people that, a lot of people that. <laughs> I try to teach as many people as I can who are interested in trading, right? But anyway, not personally, not personally. Um, so please don't send me emails asking me to be your mentor and all of that. Um, go ahead and watch my videos. That's the best that I can do. I'm a busy man, so this is the only time that I can, you know, share my knowledge with you guys. But anyway, what I normally tell people is, take what the market gives you. Do not be greedy. When, when price bottoms out, right, just before it comes back to the zone, when price bottoms out here, just before it comes back to the zone, make sure that you take your profit right there, right? Speaking from experience, what I've noticed quite a lot happened is, um, so price finds a level up here, right? Proximal, distal, finds a level, spends a lot of time, comes back to the level again. What I noticed is it normally exceeds this level here. It normally exceeds that level and it continues to go. Sometimes it may go double the distance of this. Sometimes it may go, you know, I don't know, not so much, but it could just, essentially reverse like 100 pips below your original take profit and then go back again and bust you know that um, supply zone or that demand zone that we had established or we had taken our trade from so i would strongly suggest that when price gets to that level down there right after you've entered go ahead and take your profit don't wait for anything else that's going to happen here let it happen you will get more opportunities elsewhere
if not the very same currency pair or the very same security. So take what the market is giving you in order for you to be able to, you know, smile all the way to the bank. Uh, because if you leave it, if you leave it, and you're thinking, you know what, I'm just going to trail my stock, not really trail my stocks, but if you leave it, chances are, or what would normally happen is, once price finds another level right there, it normally goes back up hard to break this level here. You know what I mean? So don't leave. If you're going to be trailing your stop as well, don't leave um, your take profit at break even once after you've busted, you know, or once after price has busted your target. You know what I mean? Go ahead and move it to um, your first target profit, which is where price bottoms out. Go ahead and leave it there, right here. So that when price comes back, you already have all of this in the bank. I've seen a lot of people do that. I've seen a lot of people forget that, you know, they've moved their take profit to, uh, I, mean, I mean, they've moved their stop to uh, break even. Only to find that price comes back and it busts this level here, you know, essentially kicking them up without a profit. And they had to wait four months here. They had to wait four months. You know what I mean? That's, you know what, that's silly mistakes to be making as a trader. You need to always be on your game. Yeah, manage your trades. Every morning when you get up and you check your, your when you go when you go into the markets, just before you do anything, before you check the, you know, before you go through your charts and all of that shit, just go ahead and manage your trades before you do anything. Right? Make sure everything is right. Make sure everything is a okay. Otherwise, you could lose. Don't ever ever do that. But anyway, take what the market gives you. Take what the market gives you. Do not be greedy. Right? Um, maybe when you have the experience, then you can, I don't know, experiment with that. <laughs> Let price go beyond um, your original target profit and see if, you know, you'll be driving a Lamborghini in like four months down the line or whatever the case is. But anyway, that's how I do it. I take what the market gives me, but sometimes I may just hold on and see what price actually does. I like to do that sometimes, but yeah, you know. It really isn't worth it. Just take what the market is giving you and run. Right? Do not regret it. So, let's go back to it again. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. There's one other thing that I need to discuss. So, how far did price go before coming back to the zone? Right? You always need to know that because that gives you an idea of, you know, your, your target profit. Normally, what I would do is when I'm trading or I'm, when I'm day trading, right? I have to make sure that, you know, when price comes back from here, I have to make sure when I'm day trading, I'm day trading the 15 minute chart, right? So I have to make sure that this area here before price returned will give me three times my risk. I always have to make sure of that. If it doesn't give me three times my risk, I will not take that trade. Hear me, I will not take that trade. So if you're trading the five minute chart, make you you better make sure that it will cover you know your three times the risk because otherwise you essentially just playing around in the market we all we all in it to make a profit right one two three is the best risk to reward ratio that you know any trader can actually get or ask for in uh, yeah industry standard standard and it works you know what i mean it works i'm not gonna go into risk to reward ratios and all that shit but like i said when i day trade when I day trade, I have to make sure, I always, always, always make sure that, um, you know, I take three times my risk. Always make sure, always make sure that when price moves away from that zone, it can cover your three times. Because remember, our, our target would be where price bottomed out, right? So if this doesn't make um, three times the risk, let's just say it makes two and a half for instance, and it ends round about there, two and a half round about there, what would be the point? You know what I mean? Yes, it's, it's profit at the end of the day. I understand that. But rules are rules. You know what I mean? And this is, I believe, what sets, you know, amateurs and professionals apart. It's because professionals are able to follow rules and amateurs don't follow rules. You know what I mean? And that's how they suffer from FOMO and they get out of trades quick and all of that shit. It's essentially because they, they, they're just unable to follow rules. As clear as these rules are, 
I know a lot of people are not going to follow these rules as clear as they are. Anyway, so great stuff. So that's what I do when I'm day trading, essentially. Right? I always, always have to make sure that um, once price initially, when, it, when price establishes that supply or that demand zone and it moves away from that zone, I want to make sure that it will cover three times um, my, um, my initial risk. If it's more, then that's beautiful. That's great. I'll target the low, you know. So say three was up to there. and But however, price bottomed out there before it went back to the zone. I'll target the zone here. You know what I mean? As opposed to my three. I'll still lock my uh, profits here. My TP will still go here. Touchpad again, guys. <laughs> this doesn't, this doesn't, this is not an abbreviation for touchpad, by the way. Take profit, take profit, take profit. So take profit here. I'll still lock it in, right? But I'll still have my, 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 uh, I mean, my stop here, will, my stop will be here, right? And my take profit will be down here. Remember, my three times will be covered here. So all of this is just icing. Everything below the three times is just icing. You know what I mean? It's just icing on the cake. All right, so let's take a look at the next point here. This is the first time that I wrote things down here. But anyway, the next point here is let's go back to our list. Uh, so the next point here is also very, very, very important. How many times has price tested the zone? Four rules. That's all. How many times has price tested the zone? Right? Ideally, you want price to only go back to that zone the first time and that is when we are going to be taking up our, our trade we're not going to be taking the trade when you know price tested the first time comes back down for a very very long time and then comes back up again we're not going to be taking this we want we're interested in taking this here the first time price interacts with that level that's the only time that we're going to be taking it right again experience has taught me that Price, especially in Forex, price sometimes does this. And I'll show you what I mean. On the very same currency pair, Swiss Bank Japan, yeah. Price sometimes, you know, leaves the zone, comes back the first time around, leaves the zone again, and that's the time that we would get in, right? Leaves the zone again, comes short of the target itself, right, where it bottomed out. Go back instantly to the zone again to test it for the second time. And that second time would still work out. I would not take that second time. Let me explain. I would not take that second time. Right? The reason price leaves hard from a zone is because all of those orders here by the market makers. Right? Now, as you see here, demand is dwindling here. Right? When demand dwindles, it basically means that there's not enough demand in the market. Right? So now the market makers, when they come in, because they have quotas, right? They don't just trade like we fucking trade. Um, they have big pockets. Because they have quotas to fill, because they have targets to meet and all that, right? They have targets to meet and all that. And because they, they want to hide their, their, their original intentions away from us, simpletons, they can't just drop $2 billion into the market. Right, because that candle would ultimately be one big ass candle like that. One big candle like that. And we would all see that, oh, here they are. Once after that candle closes, we trade because we know that the markets are going to go down. Right? You understand that? It's logic. Think about that. If they drop a, a billion at a, at a particular level, that candle would be huge. Actually, let's not say a billion. Let's say... Mm, so everybody says four, I believe it's four trillion that goes through the market on a daily basis, right? So let's just say they drop three trillion dollars into the, into the market. Can you imagine how big that candle would be <laughs> on that particular time? At that particular time when their order gets filled, when it gets to a particular level, that, that candle will be huge. And remember, if one of the market makers drops that type of money, 
the next will follow. So meaning the next candle that's going to come after that is equally going to be huge. Think about that. Right? And that's how the market makers see what the other market makers' intentions are. As well as the big boys, your hedge fund guys and all of that shit. That's how they see. Right? And that's why it is so important that candles need to be big. Or, you know, we need to leave that zone in a gap fashion. That's my error right there. You know what I mean? They want to conceal their intentions so they don't drop a lot of money into the markets. Now, what was I on about again? Um, oh, yeah, the second time the price actually tests. So the second time price tests. Oh, yeah, now I remember what I was explaining. <laughs> now I remember. All right, so initially when the market makers drop their money or for, for, for you know, price to move hard away from a zone like it does here it basically means that you know there's not enough demand in the market going in right so therefore the market makers have dropped their big chunks of money into the market right but because there's not enough demand coming into the market the only reaction that's going to happen reacting to that big chunk of money is you know price is actually going to start to move down now remember this is the level that they're interested in trading right now remember if they have Let's say two billion, right? Two billion to distribute between, actually, to to trade with essentially at this particular level here, at this particular level here. Right. So let's just say they have two billion, right? And only five hundred million. <laughs> that looks nice. Five hundred million. Um, Orders, right, are coming into the market. Buy orders are coming into the market. And they have two billion that they need to open a position with. They're not going to drop the two the whole two billion in there, right? The two billion, let's just say, suppose they drop one billion here at this zone here. It's going to trump this five hundred million. Therefore, a reaction would, would occur. And that's how the breaks out the breakouts occur. That's how these breakouts occur. You know what I mean? So now the two billion is now 1 billion at the very same level. So the next time that mar the market comes in here, that 1 billion gets put into the market, therefore driving prices down. Do you understand what I mean? So the third time or the second time that the market comes back into this zone, what do you think would be left there? If the market makers on the first run, right, on the, the first time that they establish their uh, the, su the the supply or demand zone right they drop half of you know their position right so we're talking half right so they drop half at the first time that they establish that let's remove all of this so they drop one billion here and then they drop two billion at the oh no another one billion right so now they have nothing in their little purse that they can spend when price comes back for the third time so what do you think could possibly happen here when demand comes in here and there's no supply there from the market makers logic price will continue to go up think about that and that is the reason why it is important to trade when price tests that level the first time around not the second time around first time around Sometimes, like I said, sometimes it works. Sometimes the second test, the second test, let's just say this was the first, right? The second test when it comes in, sometimes it has a reaction and a large reaction, a larger reaction than the first, the first time that price actually tested that level. And I'll show you now what I mean when we go into Swiss Franc Japan EM, right? So remember that. That's what we want to see, guys. We want to see how many times that level has been tested ideally you want that level to not have been tested in the first place right you want to see price move away from the zone like it did here yes price tried to test that zone but it didn't right and it continued to go down making this a beautiful zone for us to actually trade in the future get it Fantastic. Had this gone in here, like that, that's where we would have taken our trade.
But look here. Does this meet your 1 to 3 risk to reward ratio? If it does, if you can get 3 times these. Here. Before price gets to this bottom here. Then you can take the trade. Right? See how little time it's spent away from the zone? Before it came back. Suppose this one here. This, this week here. Tested this level here. This would be your profit margin or your profit target when you get in here. Comprende? Great stuff. Great stuff. So that's it. How many times has the level been tested? Right? Now I want to talk to you about something. The le this level here, you also want to make sure that that level is a fresh level. Not really a fresh level, an untested level, which is the same thing that I actually just said right now. You doesn't matter call it a fresh level a lot of people call it a fresh level call it a fresh level or call it whatever i just untested level so you want to make sure that the level is untested when price comes back to the se the second time right that really is the definition of a fresh level that it hasn't been tested on either side hasn't been tested on the left there's no price interaction right before this zone has been formed there's no price interaction on the same level and then price gets formed here. Then you know that it's it's not an ideal level. So you want to see nothing here. And you want to see nothing here until price comes back. So we want to trade when it comes back for the first time right here. right? So you don't want this test here to have been successful. Let price go down. So you don't want this here to have been successful here. And then let price go down, come back in again, and, and then we take our trade here. No, we needed to take our trade right there. Understand? Not the second time. Get that right. Comprende? So that's it, guys. That's all there is to it. How did price leave the area? You need to make sure of that. How did price leave the area? Was it big candles? Was it a gap? That's what we want to see. We want to see big candles out of that zone. We want to see a gap out of that zone. We don't want to see it moving gradually out of the zone. Then we don't trade that. Right? How much time was price at the zone? Like I said, my rules are anywhere between 1 and 4. Then I'm cool with that. Anywhere between 1 and 4. Always understand that. Anywhere between 1 and 4. That's my rules. You can make it up to 5. Or you can make it up to 6. Test it. Test it first. Make sure that you test it first, right? To see if it will actually hold, if it will actually work. Um, but yeah, that's essentially it. My rules dictate to me that anywhere between 1 to 4, then I can trade it. 5, 6 and all that, I wouldn't trade that. That wouldn't be attractive to me. High probability is the name of the game here, right? All right, so how far did price go before coming back to the zone? How far did price go before coming back to the zone? That basically tells us how far or not really how far but what type of profits we can actually expect from that move you know even or from from you know the second reaction that we get from that that zone itself right so it is important and lastly how many times has price tested the zone ideally we don't want it we don't want that zone to be tested right so going back to this here seeing that we are at this blue candle here we don't want to see any tests here. We don't want to see any tests of this level, right? Until price bottoms out. Until price bottoms out and then makes its way back up. We don't want to see any tests, right? And again, make sure that when it pulls away from that initial, uh, once after it's established uh, the uh, demand or supply zone, you want to make sure that just before, not really just before, but after it's bottomed out, essentially, you want to make sure that you can take one to three risk to reward ratio, right? So your risk to reward, it doesn't matter what type of risk to reward you do. You Look, you could, you could be working on a one to five, one to 10, one to 20, risk reward ratio that's completely up to you but just make sure that 
when price pulls away from that initial establishment of that uh, supply or demand zone, that it covers your risk to reward ratio, right? And then you know that when you trade that particular level, you are going to walk away with um, your, your reward, essentially, right? So minus one, two, three, especially when I day trade. So uh, yeah, that's how I do it. Price has to go away, get away from that zone at least three times the risk itself. Um, the risk which is the area between the proximal and the distal and that's the only time that I'll take the trade if it doesn't meet the standards I will not or if it doesn't if the checklist is not or if it doesn't meet the checklist it doesn't make the checklist then I won't I won't I won't take the trade whatsoever right and yeah so that's it how many times has price tested the zone oh that's the last one how many times has price tested the zone we don't want to see multiple tests on the zone we want to be in it when it first comes back to the zone. When, when price first comes back to the zone, that's the only time that we want to trade. Second time, third time, fourth time, we don't want to be trading that. Because like I said, remember, the market makers' pockets run dry, right? Because they pump all this money at every single time or the first time they establish that su supply or demand zone and the second time that the supply or demand is tested. Those are the only times that they're going to be pumping in their money into the market. Yes, they may do it on the, on the, on the second test um, after they've established that supply or demand zone. Um, but I would say don't trust it. <laughs> Rather preserve the capital and wait to see what happens to that level. I would not take it. But I'm going to show you what I mean when I say it sometimes works out. How long are we in this for? 46 minutes. All right, let's, let's go into a chart here chart here what was it swiss franc japan yen swiss franc japan yen where are you chf japan yen there she is oh my god where did she go uh, anyway swiss franc japan yen there she is swiss franc japan yen so this is the zone remember guys let, let me just draw there's a distal right there distal and approximal now current price as I scroll along or as we go along where's my f12 as we go along see price starts to so we, we've established now we've established here the price has bottomed out here and that's our target right there so here is a zone and here is get away and here is our target down here right because price look price is starting to move up right so demand is coming back into the market right so remember we want to see this happen right here we're not doing anything until price gets to this zone always know that guys we want to see all of this shit happen until price comes back to the zone and that's the only time that we're going to trade remember now this level here meets all of our criteria right this level here meets all of our criteria everything everything is 100 percent now take a look what happens as price advances so price advances yes it takes a long time but the reward is good look let's take a look and see what happens and there's a lot of sideways though hey let's see if we can speed this up there we go so here we go the results of a zone that meets our criteria see that price shoots all the way down now we know this is the second time the price tests the zone right that's the second time price tests the zone right? and we want to be in here so there we go and here's our target right here right there's our target We've hit target. Still continues to go down. Still continues to go down. Still continues to go down. You see? So here. Normally, typically I would I wouldn't be I wouldn't I would have been out a long time ago here. I would I don't want to be hanging around here. Right? I do not want to be hanging around here. I'd rather much I'd much rather bank my profits and yeah, get out of dodge. But anyway, if you want to hold here, it's completely up to you, right? Great. Now, look what happens here. 
price spends a lot of time below our target and look here it comes back again to test our level see that that's the second test and that's a beautiful test an immediate test that is the second time oh no that's the third time right actually that's the second time it tests it that's the second time this level has been tested and take a look and see what happens in a few days our target is hit again and boom price just continues to go until current until current price it just continues to go so that is what a level that meets our criteria looks like this is actually the first time it tests i'm a sucker for these things sorry but anyway see that we established the zone right up there price came down retraced back to the zone itself and then it shot all the way down came back again for the second time to our level and then it shot all the way down again you see that surpassing this level as well surpassing this level right there as well so yeah i just don't like taking these chances second test i will not take i only take the first test get out of dodge um yeah i, I just I, I won't take it i won't take it but this one would have been way 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 attractive i would have most probably taken this one but would have been way more attractive i wouldn't have gotten at my at the um at the proximal line though i would have gotten late i would have gotten late what about here you see that gap there i actually i actually would have man now let's see there's a gap there i see a gap here sorry guys <laughs> Just want to see what I would have done here. There's a gap here. And see, that gap leaves this zone here. And this zone, oh well, and gaps are actually quite too potent, right? So it leaves that zone there. But the zone, um, this next candle or the next day, price tests this level. I would have taken a chance on this one. Low risk. I would have, I would have, I don't know, I would have, probably risked a, a whole lot less than the normal 2% that I risk. Probably 1% to take that because I wouldn't be certain of what's going to happen here. But in this case, it, it worked out. Not all the time it's going to work. Most of the time it's not going to work out. So you need to be very, very careful about that. Right? Let's take a look at another chart. Euro. Nah. Let's take Euro Japan and I always do Euro USD. This is the hourly chart, right? Oh, the, this is the hourly chart. Now let's take a look to show you that the same concept actually applies on um, any time frame essentially. Let's take a look and see what happened there. Um, let me see if I can find a good and reliable zone. There you go. Here's one here. There's a nice level right there. Now why this level? A lot of people like asking me this. Why this level here? That's this is also supply level, guys. You need to understand that. Now, as you can see, on either sides of this, there's just pure supply. Big candles. Can you see that? Big candles successive in, in succession, in quick succession, right at the top. And then out of that zone comes this very, very large and big candle right there supply candle to the downside so this basically says that's a side movement that's a sideways movement to me right so i would have taken this i would have taken this trade here big sideways movement price moves away from that zone for quite a long time comes back in to test it and then ultimately comes back to the level here or it comes back to where it bottoms out here where it bottoms out here Another thing that I would have done, yeah, where it bottoms out there, right? I would have taken my uh, profit round about here. See, it's the same concept. It's around about when price reached here, I would have taken my profit. 
Now take a look at this. Interesting. Take a look at that. Let's go back one more time. So now look what happens when price gets here now, though. We've got supply coming into the market, into the zone here. And look what comes popping out. Oh, look what comes popping out. We've got big demand coming out of this here. That's the last example, guys. Just I've been dragging this for quite a long time. But we've got big demand coming out of there. And then supply just, you know, it just slowly goes back into the zone. Remember what I said to you? It goes up. It goes up and when it comes back to the zone itself take note of how long it actually takes for it to not how long ah well how long how long really just basically shows me that you know there's not enough supply i mean if there was enough supply here think about it logic if there was enough supply here right in this large box that i've just drawn here which i just want to change its color if there was in the yellow box, if there was a lot of supply here, don't you think that these red candles would have been big? They would have, right? All the way down. And if that was the case, then we would have known that this green zone here, there's a possibility that it might not hold. Think about that. Right? Bearing bearing in mind that we just came from a downtrend here where we took our profit, right? We just came from this downtrend, right? So the only logical thing that could happen in this small box here is when price makes its way down to this level again, then there'll be big supply to the downside, right? But that's not the case. And another clue that basically tells us that supply is kind of dwindling is how price comes out of that zone here. See what these big two candles here? And then it comes back down again, takes our order down here at the edge of the box. We take three times the risk and we out with a profit. You get me? This is an example of a not so reliable zone for me. Well, in this case, it worked out. Can you see that? This is not a reliable zone for me. And the actual zone is until that far. Because you see, right after that, supply comes out here, right? So all we have to do is wait for price to come back into the zone firstly two things that i see that are wrong here too many candles here too many candles here and look how far price goes one two three and on the fourth day it comes back to test the edge of the box you could have sold here could have taken your chances i wouldn't so two things two aspects of my uh, checklist is not met here so I wouldn't have taken this trade, right? And let's see what happens thereafter. Pretty much nothing else. And this is not a zone. Yes, there's a big candle that comes popping out of there, out of this zone here, big demand candle, but that's, that's not a zone. The reason it's not a zone is because of all this price action on the left it's not it's not really a nice zone that's not a zone that i would risk my money on but anyway this zone here the yellow the big yellow one that i said i wouldn't take would have been a nice trade had you held it for quite a long time you know what i mean would have been quite a nice trade. Now, gap. You see what's going on here? Remember what I said to you guys? Gaps. When price, we look for gaps. When price gaps away from the zone here, then we know that that gap is actually quite a strong one. Or the zone here is quite a strong one. But why did price not go down here? Why did supply or why did demand kick in here? Or rather, why did price not have a reaction here or why did this supply these three candles here why did they not continue to go all the way down well it's simple price formed another zone here 
as you all need to be on your toes price formed another level right there can you see that take a look at how big these three candles are one two three leaving the zone can you see that it surpassed this and that's the reason why price didn't have a reaction to the zone here is because demand kicked in and it kicked in hard but if you look to the right though no reaction to the zone when we get to it now what's the reason for that guys the reason for that is overall bias we're in a downtrend so if i was to go to the four hour chart we can clearly see that we're in a huge downtrend very very big downtrend let's go over to the daily chart yeah we're in a very huge downtrend so bias is to the downside right um so essentially when you're buying you're counter trend trading but you can counter trend trade because you, we wait to see what price actually does when it leaves a level until it comes back right and that tells us whether we can take the trade or whether we, we shouldn't be taking the trade as, at all right because this would have been a counter trend trade where is it um, this one here with the green with the green zone with the green demand this would have been a counter trend trade uh, auto snap get away this would have been a counter trend trade but let's see let's see if let's see let's take a look at the zone here quick so we're looking at about 20 pips right 20 pips so we want a, a 60 pip return that's about 50 right there so it would have taken your chances right there and if you did take your chances 60 would have been on about there on about there give or take slightly above the high so you would have gotten out with uh, a little bit of a profit there but had you let it go you wouldn't have gotten out right at the top but you would have got out right at the test here the retest so it would have made 140 pips return at the next supply zone anyway guys that's it thank you once again for joining me i really 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 appreciate each and every one of you who subscribe to my channel and um yeah until next time i hope this answers a lot of questions and uh you know i hope you get to the level that you want to get to but remember it takes hard work and remember guys test it do not under any circumstances do not live trade this back test it first and then uh, run it through a simulation or simulator and uh, yeah once you're consistent with it and you're able to identify the zones perfectly and comfortably go ahead and trade it you know what i mean live trade it but be sure you need to be sure guys don't don't just go into the market and lose money anyway that's that's it from me guys trader x it's been beautiful it's been an hour with you guys and uh, thanks once again for your support, guys. I really appreciate it. Have a great one. I'm out.